Hey Stevie. <laughs> Maybe you all can hear me this time around. Hey, what's up? Ghost Host 2222 here. I'm going to start Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 here soon. Since next month, the new Sherlock Holmes game is going to be... Um... on April the 11th. It, and the camera was, uh, the camera was cutting my face off too. Pre-ordering that game sometime soon. And I also bought a digital copy of another game, which I'll be doing um, either on Saturday or Sunday. And that one is called um, Injection, but the name of the game is really called Injection Greek symbol that looks like an N, and it says no number, no name, no number. Um, no name, no number. And that's what the whole title is. It's an indie horror game. That uh, somebody on the net said that it was a love letter to the uh, Silent Hill games like Silent Hill 2. As to which I might be doing that on Saturday maybe. So yeah, um... If y'all may have noticed that earlier that there was a Sherlock Holmes game streaming, I, uh, yeah, um, I didn't notice that my mic wasn't down. In fact, when it's up, it's muted. Half the time, I don't notice that, and I think it's because I, when I'm not live, I'm watching DVDs and stuff like that and the mic doesn't, the mic isn't really uh, usable at that time. So yeah, 
Let's see here. Um, gameplay. Subtitles are on. Vibration is on. Language is English. The assist is normal. Don't know nothing about the video. The audio. I'm not going to do anything about the music. Difficulty is Young Detective. New game. New game. Previous autosaves will be overwritten. Okay. A mother's love. Ask the receptionist about my room. I see poison ivy. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Press any button to continue. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Travelling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Oh, at last. I'm... Quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on, we'll go together. A mother's love. Ask the receptionist about my room. Press any button to continue. Hey Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Mother's love, welcome to the game. Use the left stick to move around and press the X button to interact with objects. Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice.
Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo di Lusso, sir. We just need your signature. There's the guest book. Let's sign in. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Oh, yeah, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I think there's a balcony with a view. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Would you like a drink, sir? Would you like a drink, sir? Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk.
221 I apologize sir but your room is not yet ready perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Perhaps, in the meantime, you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Hmm. Let's check what they have on offer. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Mm. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. We do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth... Like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening.
Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck in. What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck in. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What do you have in mind? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Why should I return it? Deliver it to him. Then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. <laughs> but all right. Let me take a look. No matter how long you stare at the stick, it's not going to walk itself to its owner. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Hmm. Hmm. What's this? A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the fielding family or meadows. Or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. Hmm. What's this? The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Hmm. In the middle? What's this? The cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Hmm. The lost cane. Sherlock can ask bystanders. Sherlock can ask bystanders about a piece of evidence. Press options to open the casebook, pin the evidence with the square button, and then speak to someone. Try it now with the cane. The lost cane. The cane is made of ebony wood with an oddly detailed carving of bulb of garlic, most likely the coat of arms. The hand grip is made of a go Javanese statue in the Wei Ying style, likely stolen from a temple. Together, the cane and knob are so heavy that if swung with ferocity, it could break any bone. Indeed, the cudgel bears the sign of numerous such hits, showing the owner took little care of it. In some, 
This valuable cane most likely belongs to an English noble. John wants me to find its owner. To do so, I shall have to inquire with other guests in the player as to who may have been sitting at this table. Hmm. Pin evidence. There we go. This cane is the accessory of a British nobleman. I can ask other guests about who may have been previously sitting here. Do you know anything about this? Yes, sir. It'll be an honor to help you. The lost cane. There were three people at the table. A couple and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple. But the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have to find him. Oh, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. To find the cane's owner, I have to locate the former Navy officer who went out into the front garden. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Is this familiar to you? I can't help you with that, sir. May I ask for your assistance? I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. May I ask for your assistance? I can't help you, friend. Excuse me, just one question. I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. You sure you know what you're doing? Do you know anything about this? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Can I ask you a question? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. You sure you know what you're doing? May I ask you something? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. The retired Navy officer who was sitting at our table may own the cane, or know who does. John has bet I cannot guess the officer on the first try. I should prove him wrong. Someone left their cane at my table. I suspect he will want it back. 
My apologies, sir, but I wouldn't know how to identify its owner. Hmm. So the simplest option ended in failure. That's irritating. No, what is irritating is you trying to break the rules of my game, Sherry. Don't be so lazy. Can I ask you a question? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. The lost car, the lost cane. The Navy officer, Mr. Rhodes, was sitting at our table with a noble couple. The men talked about yachting and the lady was fidgeting with the cane. Perhaps she put it aside and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. So, the Navy officer was sitting at that table with the couple. And the guy who she was with put it aside and he forgot about it on the table. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to do the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I can give the cane back to its owner. So they still could be in the seance room. Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. Hotel, this island is full of thieves. First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy, that's my cane! I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made. A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Observe. His nose? Code to inspect. Red face, swollen reddish skin.
He has a ring. A head of garlic doesn't wear a wedding ring. His knuckles. Slightly red knuckles recently hit someone with force. And his clothes. Expensive and new clothes, rich and fashionable. A head of garlic doesn't wear a wedding ring. Red face, swollen reddish skin, expensive and new clothes, rich and fashionable, slightly red knuckles, recently hit someone with force. Bored English nobleman. Judging by the heroic emblem on his signet ring and cane, I can be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, a bored rich English nobleman who travels around Europe squandering his money. His florid face indicates that he has problems with alcohol. He is still physically strong and healthy, but in a few years time he'll be wretched, being constantly drunk he has issues with his temper. His red knuckles reveal that he has severely beaten at least one person quite recently. His anger issues mixed with alcohol and contrariety could make him a violent person. Lord Craven. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol. Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply... Marvelous! That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr. Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. Tell me about the diamond. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. What happened at the seance? You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. 
The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade. And quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Hmm. I'm going to look around. Leave. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret. I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. I'm back. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. Barely conscious. Feebleness of women. Excuse me. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. <laughs> what happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Are any spirits here now? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. We'll find out who did it. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. But perhaps you can reason with him? Please? I didn't take the diamond, I swear. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. 
I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. I didn't take the diamond, I swear. Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sharon? It adds so much atmosphere to the room. Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. Broken chair. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. One man even lifted it. At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. Hmm. After colliding with the wall, this chair is all but in pieces. Hmm. A broken chair. Press L1 to highlight interactive areas in the environment around you. This ability must recharge before it can be used again. Diamond in the middle of the table. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details about the world around you. When you see a scribbled white circle, press R1 to observe the object more closely. Okay, we have a white circle. We press the R1 button on this thing right here. Oval groove. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. Oval groove. Iron four carat diamond. 1.3 inch diameter. That looks like a wine glass. This must be the ectoplasm. 
Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm. The ghost was here, Sherry. Or ectoplasm, I mean. So that's the green stuff. That the ghost left behind. Or the spirit left behind. Let's see what else we have. Maybe this is the wine glass. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. So, a wine glass. What's this? An ashtray? Half a glass of foul Blair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? Hmm. And... Let's see here... We got that. We got that. We got that. We got that. That's the green ectoplasm. There's one more somewhere. Ooh, right here. On the jacket. Rotate. And we have a butterfly brooch. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind, Palace Show. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. You found enough clues to make a deduction. Open the casebook with options. Then navigate in the mind palace. Inside, pair the clues you gathered to make deductions. Okay, so we go into Mind Palace, Ghosts of the Past, The lady pointed across the table. Lady Craven pointed across the seance table at something and screamed. Lady Craven faced the window. During the seance, Lady Craven's place at the table was opposite a window to the courtyard. The courtyard witness, Lady Craven, was pointing at the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. Wow. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. 
Oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. I see a white circle. It's a shoe. This is a half of a shoe. This looks like a heel. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Hmm. Okay, let's see here. We need to pin someone in the courtyard. Lady Craven must have seen someone outside as she was pointing at the window. I'm certain that someone was in the courtyard during the seance. A witness or an accomplice? I should check the area and see if there are any traces outside. I found a broken heel piece under the window. A shoe without a heel would leave scratches. Easy to track. So we pin this. To track someone's movements, first pin the relevant evidence to the screen. Then enter concentration mode with R1 to reveal the trail. Sherlock will intuit the approximate path, so stay within that search area. Okay. So that's where the she was. It was right here. Oh. Mm, excuse me. Okay, so we go this way. Aha! Someone's walking. Aha! Someone's in here.
Here we go. Somebody's shoe. Another lace. Rose de Moor. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. Hmm. Yeah, but somebody is missing the heel. Size four with a broken heel. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless. No. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Hmm. Shoes, size for belonging to a maid. Is this familiar to you? Oh yes, I can tell you everything, sir. Someone in the courtyard. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward while wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. She is upstairs near the paintings. This is 225. Near the paintings. Could it be her? Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towel? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I don't want to lie. I am solving a crime. A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss? Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Celeta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I... Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. 
I have a family. I need this work. I won't, but only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. What did you see in the room? Describe what happened during the seance. A lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest, a glowing cloud or a, a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did you? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. Hmm. Did you see anything else? And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? Mm -hmm. the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right, I have your account memorized. Good day. You scared the poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. The ghost. Oh, sir, I remember it forever. The ghost. Oh, sir, I remember it forever. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Something's going on in that room. I hear a noise. It's like a low... It's like a low humming noise. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Here is that noise that I was hearing. With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past, interact with the node to begin, then recreate an accurate version of events. Here, try to place the seance participants in their correct positions. Okay, so Lord, I mean Lady Craven was pointing at the window. Okay. Ah! 
No. No. So she was opposite the window because that's where the maid was looking at her at. And she screamed when she saw the maid peeking in the window. This is where the ectoplasm was at. No. That's where the medium was at. So he was the one with the hat. And Lord Craven was over here sitting with the chair. Okay, so this is the correct sequence. She was pointing at the window because the maid was peeking in the room. The medium The one with the top hat was fighting with the ghost or the spirit. And Lord Craven had a chair. And that could be where that chair ended up at in pieces over there. So this is the correct position. So we now we hit validate with R1. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? So she was the only one who had her hand on the diamond. Hmm. So, either the ghost or her stole the diamond.
the probable thief. When the spirit appeared, there was chaos. Lady Craven screamed and pointed away from the spirit towards the window. Lord Craven and the medium were distracted by this. It appears that Lady Craven was the last person who held the diamond. I should talk to her about it. The lone servant in the seance room told me that the Craven's room, number 226, is upstairs. So we need to have a chat with Lady Craven and see if she knew who stole the diamond because either something stole it or she's not telling the truth. Two twenty-four. I see here. Two twenty-five is over here. Hmm. The maid who was up here must have left. Two twenty-five. So 226 is this away. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? Gossip can help you investigate Lady a Craven case. Is not who she seems. Or even Remember discover a new one. So don't hesitate to eavesdrop on people. When you see an ear icon, hold the X button and try Lady to Craven filter out important words Remember from useless chatter. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? Start. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall? Lady Craven. Made her husband drunk. Was on the lookout. Price is rising. Yin cannot use a fish knife. Maze noticed that I was eavesdropping, so they screamed and ran off. Mm. 
gossip regarding Lady Craven. I overheard two staff members talking about Lady Craven. They gossiped that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. By their observation, she was on the lookout during the evening while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. Hmm. So she was on the lookout and she was trying to get him drunk. So she wasn't Lady Craven. Oh, wow. You're here, at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now, it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please, help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. Hmm. Was Emma with you? And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where is the medium? Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servant secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Hmm. So, she wasn't Lady Craven after all, she was just Lord Craven's mistress. Hmm. Very interesting. Where did you go next? Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. What did you do next? So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. More than an hour has passed and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? 
<laughs> now, now it has transpired from a theft to a mark. You okay? Hold my hair again. Oh. Honest, you all, I knew that he wasn't going to marry because of his ring. Uh, ring. He was wearing some type of other ring instead of a wedding ring. Thank you. 
VR game.
Thanks, Stevie. Okay, I'm back. Let's see here. Do something about it, Holmes. I... I did not do it. You know that. So this is where the corpse is. So, let's see here. She has a bruised throat. Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. Red handbag. Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. So somebody was searching for something. This is, looks like it's the diamond. Yellow diamond. This must be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen, now forever tainted. I think she stole the stone. It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. Okay.
There's a white circle over here that we need to view. Ordinary. Remarkably simple lock. Ordinary weak lock and cheap brass. Concentration. There's another white circle right here. Uh -huh. Too shallow. Place. Why would she conceal all of this? A hidden compartment. What's this? Butterfly ring? Hmm, this ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. Somebody had Somebody's jacket had that, that same brooch. Ooh, what's this? What does this say? Virtuous A doctor Sapit What does that mean? Virtus or Doctor Sapit Courage tastes bold A unique family motto Courage tastes bold Hmm Checks. What's this? Several thousand pounds, that's quite a fortune. Twelve K. Ooh, what <clears throat> excuse me. What's this? Some type of case? Fard Rouge Calomel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress. The mystery deepens. A victim with a checkered past and poor taste. Hmm. Someone was not happy with his post. <clears throat> the letter regarding the stolen ring. Dear sir, I have to inform you that the theft investigation continues. However, the ring has not yet been found. 
we had to free Elo DuPont, the servant, as we were unable to find any evidence of his participation in the crime. We will inform you of any progress in this case. Lieutenant Gerbo, Marcelo, Police Commission, Commissariat. Someone was not happy with his post. Someone was not happy with his post. What's over here? Letter regarding compensation. Lord Craven, you promised me compensation for your gross misconduct in order to cover the cost of my treatment and quell the scandal yet I have not received a penny you know that I lost my job after your false accusations now even after my innocence has been proven I can't return to work because of my hand injury if you continue to ignore me I shall be forced to appeal to the court Wow. Hmm. The what? My comments aren't showing up. I made new ones. Huh? I made new ones. Oh wow. Yeah. They are really fucking things up over there. Not only is some not only is some dick over there putting the incorrect titles after your after you sign off, but they also take and they have the ending sign to pop up even when somebody is still live and the comments are not even showing up. I type it in, send it, and then it's already there. And nothing's showing up. Oh. So somebody over there deserves to have their ass handed to them. Yeah. Whoever you are, you better be damn, you better consider yourself very damn lucky that I don't know who you are. Because I could have your job. Yeah. Damn pencil neck dick wad. Yeah, for anybody who's watching this, uh, for anybody who's watching this stream while it's still up in the future, yeah. Somebody needs to have a little chat with Twitch over there because some dickwad over there is not doing what? their work. <laughs> mm-hmm.
Yeah. Yeah, you fucker over there, you need a wake-up call before you get your ass handed to you. Provide evidence. I am needed elsewhere. Provide evidence. Let's see here. The letter regarding the stolen ring. Dear sir, I have to inform you that the theft investigation continues. However, the ring has not yet been found. Ring with the moth design. I found this cheap ring with the moth design amongst the hidden jewels. It is made of copper and looks old. It does not fit in with the other jewels there. Hidden jewels. I found a pile of money and a family ring hidden in a secret stash amongst Miss Emma's perfumes. I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with? Ah! Oh, it cannot be so. That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police, and it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Wow. The ring with the moth design. I found this sheep ring with the moth design amongst the hidden jewels. It is made of copper and looks old. It does not fit in with the other jewels there. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? That's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. Hmm. Do something about it, Holmes. I... I did not do it. You know that. Do something about it, Holmes. I... I did not do it. You know that. Lord 
Craven's explanation. Lord Craven told me that he found Miss Emma dead shortly after coming upstairs. He is very afraid of being accused and has asked me to find the real murderer before he's taken to prison. He claimed he spent some time in the bar before coming upstairs to find his mistress laying on the bed dead, the diamond close by her. Someone at the bar must have seen him. Lord Craven also told me that Luca Galicci has been locked in the room next to his and the key from it is now at reception. We pin that one. So young and so dead. Another mystery to investigate, my friend. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. Now you're in your element, Sherry. Two twenty six. That was two twenty six, so this is two twenty five. and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Or, or weapons and defenses against visitors from the great beyond. Tools and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Letter of Invitation 
Dear Luca, I hope you will have time to visit our estate and perform another seance. Since I was last able to speak to my husband through you, I feel that my life has changed completely. I cannot wait until I can speak to him again. I am anxious for your visit. Sincerely yours, Countess Lamore. Huh. A familiar substance. It's the ectoplasm that stained the seance table, but this time there's enough for analysis. Okay, so let's see here. Ectoplasm sample. I gathered a sample of ectoplasm hoping to prove its mundane origin. The spiritualists say ectoplasm evaporates very quickly, but this substance appears to be stable. Maybe it's not really ectoplasm. If it, it, it evaporates quickly. Maybe this is just for show. Okay. Red three. Okay, let's see here.
Here we go. Confirm. So red three and green two combined to make ectoplasm. Success. The reaction shows that it is rubber latex mixed with phosphorus. As much as this chemical element is dangerous to hold in the mouth, I am quite disappointed. I expected to find something trickier. So it was rubber. Rubber latex. not ectoplasm. Yeah, but that was probably on the um, YouTube side of things. Yeah. <laughs> My faith in this medium has burst, just like a rubber balloon. Because it's rubber. It's not ectoplasm. It's just rubber. It's like a uh, rubber. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful, perhaps even too successful. I am sure this spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. <laughs> Observe. So you have a bleeding nose? Bleeding nose took a heavy blow. Your neck? Looks like there's a wound on your neck or some type of discolorization. Slight discolorization. Used a lot of makeup. Wow. It's 
so somebody was strangling you belly John complexion skinny seems malnourished Left hand. Then elongated fingers, trained in sleight of hand. Hmm. And your other hand over here. Scratched wrists, fresh scrapes, slightly beating, bleeding. So somebody, somebody fought you recently. John complexion skinny seems malnourished scratched wrists fresh scrapes slightly bleeding thin elongated fingers trained in sleight of hand slight discolorization used a lot of makeup bleeding nose took a heavy blow former thief became a medium Luca Galicci is lean and appears malnourished. His nose is bleeding from a heavy punch. His hands and thin fingers are definitely those of a thief. Trained in the delicate work of pickpocketing, he uses makeup to hide possible jail tattoos. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrists from a recent and short fight. I believe he is more a criminal than a medium, and this is his new way of earning money by deceiving the wealthy. Wow. <laughs> I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely. Oh, no, wait. What am I thinking? The spirits will have told you this already. Uh, I am not in the necessary state for summoning. The spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? Oh, what? In fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man, but I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh well, at least I can make the dead talk. Tell me about your scratches. 
Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. Hmm. Provide evidence. Let's see here. Ectoplasm sample. I gathered a sample of ectoplasm, hoping to prove its mundane origin. The spiritualists say ectoplasm evaporates very quickly, but this substance appears to be stable. The reaction shows it is rubber latex mixed with dosthorus. As much as this chemical element is dangerous to hold in the mouth, I am quite disappointed. I expected to find something trickier. Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the mouth? I beg your pardon? I'll bet it makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. <laughs> Let's see here. What else did we find? Lord Craven's explanation. Lord Craven told me that he found Miss Emma dead shortly after coming upstairs. He's very afraid of being accused and has asked me to find the real murderer before he's taken to prison. He claims he spent some time in the bar before coming upstairs to find his mistress laying on the bed dead. The diamond close by her, someone at the bar must have seen him. Lord Craven also told me that Luca Galicci has been locked in the room next to his and the key from it is now at reception the spirits are silent and so am i the ring with the moth design i found this cheap ring with the moth design amongst the hidden jewels it is made of copper and looks old it does not fit in with the other jewels there lord craven doesn't recognize the ring he is certain that he never saw Miss Emma wearing it. Hmm. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. This is all just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. They are right.
Fresh scratches. Luca has fresh scratches on his hands. Emma was strangled. The killer strangled Emma with her bare hands. Fresh scratches. Luca has fresh scratches on his hands. Emma scratched Luca. Emma left the scratches on Luca's hands to hide. Emma scratched Luca. Emma left the scratches on Luca's hands while fighting for her life.
this time and we're still in. The diamond was stolen during the seance. The diamond was beside Emma. The missing diamond was found near Emma's dead body. The murderer left the diamond. Whoever killed Emma left the diamond beside her body. The moth ring. I found a ring with a moth design on Emma's hidden in Emma's hidden stash. The moth pin. Luca owns a pin in the shape of a moth. Luca and Emma could have met before. Luca and Emma both have jewelry with the same moth design. Could they have something in common? Luca and Lord Craven were neighbors. Luca was locked in room 225, right next to Lord Craven's suite. The lock can be picked, easily picked. The door between Luca and Galicci's room and Lord Craven's room has a weak lock and could be picked. Luca could easily pick the lock. The lock between the two hotel rooms was weak. Luca could pick it easily. Luca could easily pick the lock. Beating the servants. Lord Craven punched the medium. When he discovered that the diamond had been stolen, Lord Craven punched the medium in the face. Compensation for abuse. Lord Craven had to pay compensation for beating the servants.
Lord Craven can't control his temper. Lord Craven is an unstable man who cannot manage his anger. Emma was stealing from Lord Craven. Emma is a swindler and was stealing from Lord Craven. The thief framed the servants. The thief that had stolen from Lord Craven on his trip was setting up the servants to cover their tracks. Emma had a history of deceit. Y'all. <laughs> Emma was a thief, but made Lord Craven believe that the servants were stealing. She had done it throughout their trip. Luca could know Emma was a thief. If their paths had crossed in the past, Luca could well know of Emma's predilection for thievery. The murderer left the diamond. Luca could know Emma set him up. The medium Luca Galici could have known that Emma was a thief and that she was trying to frame him for her crime. Luca Galici is the murderer. Emma tried to frame Luca, the medium, for her thief of the diamond. In revenge, he killed her. Bring Luca Galici to justice. Luca Galici is a murderer. He couldn't stop himself from killing Emma, even though he could have just told the police everything. So, instead of telling the police about her, he instead decided to kill her. I 
and that doesn't stand. Bring Luca Galici to justice. Luca Galici is a murderer. He couldn't stop himself from killing Emma, even though he could have just told the police everything. So not only was she not Lord Craven's wife, and he was not married, but she was stealing from him. And this last thing where she made up the story of it being a Raja Prince. They were in cahoots together. And then she tried to blame Luca Galici for the thievery of which she had done in the past with the stealing from him so both of them had that diamond but he Luca had the diamond so he decided to murder her instead of telling the police everything about her and decided to frame her for having the diamond saying oh she had it all along yeah right back Accuse. Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Locks can be picked. Yes, yes, the lock room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? Your scratches are... damning. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... You are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. You knew Emma was a thief. As for the motive, it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. Confess, Luca. It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... Ha. I don't know how you figured it out, but yes, I killed her, I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too, but only so our gang, the moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us, stole all our money and disappeared, leaving us 
to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink. All I suffered while she indulged. Then I grabbed her throat. You must be punished. Ah, I won't be on for much longer myself. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. You must be punished. Murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. If not, you'll get to see your friends in jail again soon. We'll meet again, Holmes. I will get you, in this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the woman who put him in jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. A mother's love. Ask the receptionist about my room. It is time to visit the cemetery. Press any button to continue. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. Wasn't it fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. How can you... Oh, lighten up. Those people made their choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness. So we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything. Even murder. And then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Mm. I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? A uh, figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, damn. Well, take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. We got 80 pounds. Now you get money for solving cases. Let's see here. Save. February the 15th. June the 26th, June the 22nd. Save will be overwritten. Okay. March the 31st, 2023 at 8.17 a.m. 8.17 a.m. I'm the dot. 8.17 a.m. Anyway, <laughs> um... Back to um, regaining my composure. Pay up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, um. 
We will continue a mother's love. Um. Uh, we will continue a mother's love on part two. Um. Let's see here. Saturdays. On Monday. Yeah, we will continue a mother's love on Monday. As to which, I am also going to be doing the pre-order of the new Sherlock Holmes games that will also come out on the 11th of next month. So, yeah. Um, for, for today, um, I might continue to do either Five Nights or... Um... Um. Hmm. In mm, injection. Injection twenty-three. No name. No number. Either that or I might try to um, finish Five Nights at Freddy's tomorrow, oh, tomorrow night. Later on today, though, I'm going to be going somewhere today. Probably to the um, B&N's or the, um, uh, the local comic shop. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Stevie. Anyway, I appreciate every single one of y'all that has been watching this part, part one, the first case. Well, actually, the start of the first case and the completion of another case, which was Ghosts of the Past. Um, the first case is A Mother's Love, which goes throughout the whole game. But yeah, there are several side cases that weave in and out of the main cases themselves. So, yeah, um... I appreciate every single one of y'all that has been watching this part, part one, or who has been lurking, or who'll be watching either while this stream is still up, or uh, the highlight, or who'll be watching the video over there on YouTube, as to which, I don't know if I have part one over there, or part two over there, or whatever I have over there. But, yeah, this will be put into a playlist as which what I did with, um, um, oh yeah, Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1. But yeah, this video will be over there on YouTube in a new playlist, which it'll have new in the title. Anyway, um... Or he'll be watching the highlight because I do highlights of every single stream that I do on here. Anyway, um, I appreciate every single one of y'all, and that includes my sweet badass boyfriend Stevie Rocker and anybody else who has been watching, or he'll be again, he'll be watching the stream while it's still up, as to which they keep them up for a week. And then they took them down. So, yeah. Um, and also, if you're new to over here, if you like or you love what you saw of this part, part one of Sherlock Holmes chapter one, feel free to hit that follow button over, the, over here and become a phantom. Also... 
Don't forget to smash that like button over there on YouTube if you like or you love this part over there as well. And also, if you're new to over there, feel free to hit that subscribe button and become a phantom. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing later on tonight. Friday night. So yeah. Anyway, until then, this has been Ghost Host 2222 over here on Twitch and my YouTube over there is Ghost Host 22. Anyway, until then, this has been Ghost Host 2222 over here on Twitch signing out. And as always, new people slash current slash future phantoms, remember to always stay wicked. Rawr!